Hello, and welcome to The Staffing Show, the only podcast that delivers tools, tips, and tactics from the staffing and recruiting industry's top executives and thought leaders. Today's podcast is brought to you by Staffing Referrals. At Staffing Referrals, we understand the challenges your agency faces every day. From finding high-quality candidates and clients to automating your recruitment process, our platform is designed to help you grow your agency faster. Imagine a world where your agency can automatically build your talent community, improve your recruiter's productivity, and automate manual processes, all the while improving the candidate experience. But don't just take our word for it. Here's what a few satisfied customers have to say. Our referral program boomed after partnering with Staffing Referrals. The technology allows us the tracking, communication, and reporting our traditional referral program desperately needed to unify and expand. Can't imagine our business without it. Are you ready to transform your staffing agency? Let's reduce your dependency on job boards, deliver the experience your candidates expect from a modern business, and turn your talent pool into a competitive advantage. Visit staffingreferrals.com and get ready to grow. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Staffing Show. Today, I am super excited to be joined by Will Scavera, the Director of Strategic Solutions at Express Employment International. Will, super excited to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for joining. David, thanks for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. Very excited to uh, <laughs> be a part of this. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Excited to have you here. And today we're going to be jumping in, talking about the franchise model and kind of getting some lessons and stories from Will's journey in the staffing industry, which you and I were able to connect at Aviante Connect recently okay. and really dig in and learn a little bit more about each other. And I think you've got a great story to tell with our audience today. To kick things off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the staffing industry? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks again for having me. So Will Scavera, like David said, Director of uh, Strategic Solutions at Express Employment International. Believe it or not, I think I was born into the staffing game. A lot of your guests are, uh, you know, they kind of accidentally fell into it. I think I was kind of born and bred. I'm a second generation franchise owner previously to, to joining Express. And so I spent time in my dad's staffing business, um, taking out the trash, you know, <laughs> the notes, doing the stuff on Sundays that that franchise owners do, and Saturdays or over the weekend, and and just handling handling the business side of owning a business with him. Delivered checks as soon as I got my license, so I can pretty much tell you where every client is still here in St. Louis. It's just That's so it's been a long. It's I've been around it since I was twelve years old, believe it or not, and so it's. It's been a fun ride. I've done the franchise thing. I've done the corporate thing. And now kind of got the best of both worlds in my express role now. Yeah. And I remember from our conversation, to so your background, your, your dad had the express franchise and then you ended up running it and now are at the corporate level. So we were actually, yeah, we were in the remedy staffing franchise. So shout okay. out to all those remedy owners that are still out there. We found it in 1992 in the remedy staffing organization here in St. Louis. And I sold it back uh, to Employee Bridge in 2020. Went to work for Employee Bridge for a little bit. So that's where I got my corporate kind of chops before coming to Express and, you know, getting back to the franchise family kind of feel over here and learned a lot along the way for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's a a great story. And could you just tell us a little bit about Express and kind of who Express is and where you guys are going in the market today? Yeah, absolutely. So Express franchise model, 860 offices across North America a little bit of presence in South Africa, as well as Australia. So we get to see a little bit of everything. $4 billion in, in revenue, number four in that latest SIA poll that kind of came out, that came out recently. So obviously our franchisees do a lot of hard work and really drive the business forward and do a great job of getting the Express brand out there and working really hard in their local communities to ensure that you know they're delivering exactly what their clients want and having such a positive effect on the community that they live and work in. You know, one of the goals here at Express is to put a million people to work. You know, I think that that's, you can see that every single day in what our franchisees do. The culture that that our founders, Bill Stoller and Bob Funk put together still runs through the veins of this company. You know, it's for me to come, it kind of felt like coming home. I know it's not where I, where I started from with Remedy and a franchise organization, but coming back back to a franchise organization where you can, I've been in the seat and I can sit there and I can almost commiserate sometimes, you know, the fear of, 
of what what might happen if we don't get another job order, what we might need to do to continue to get job orders and and what those decisions and what goes into those decisions and, and how heavy that can really weigh on you and your family too. But the support system here at Express is great. The people that they have at HQ, you know, and the resources that our franchisees have are, are tremendous. It's a really good opportunity. If you're if you're looking to get in the game, maybe reach out to, to Express and, and see if Vinny can help you out with any kind of a franchise availability we might have. Yeah, it sounds great. And it sounds like a, a great organization. So what, what are some of the things that, and I mean, you have the hands-on experience from this, but what do you like about the franchise model? So for me, you know, personally, obviously having done it, it was that gratification of you actually, you could see the result on, uh, on your work, right? So when, when you had an associate go out and get hired on and, and, you know, then, you know, that was kind of the goal, right? It, it's a, it's a weird industry to where our goal is that like, I hope I never see you again, right? There's other industries out there like that. But when you, when you think about it, you want your associates to get a job and, and keep that job and, and grow with the company that you place them at. So you hope that you you never see them again because they're they're happy and they're they're on with their new job and and off they go. And you get to you can get to feel that like you can then maybe talk to that person later down the road and they're all of a sudden a decision maker, right? And the continuity with the business owner and the franchisee being still there in, in the market and then being able to to talk to the new decision maker that maybe you put to work five seven years ago, you know, getting that opportunity to, to talk to them. I think the what a franchisee can do locally too, being that sub, subject matter expert, right? Like we work where we live, right? And that's it gives us an advantage as a franchisee to be able to say, hey, I know what type of employer this is. I know the relationships that they have with the community. I know if this is a quality employer, do I want to do work with them? Are the pay rates right? You know, all those things that, that go into making a decision and staffing that that you get to feel for because you get the feel for because you're in the market. You're there every day. Even when you go home, you see what commercials are on TV, right? I mean, you know what, what's going yeah. on in the market. And it's just a feel that they're going to be accountable. We used to, I used to call them dinner plate dollars. Like my associates and my clients need to be successful or I won't have money. <laughs> That's the end of the day, right? I'm not making any money. If, if my associates aren't making any money, I'm not making any money. And, and I think, you know, you get that in a franchise environment much more than you will in a corporate environment. No disrespect to any any other agencies out there, but I just think the real skin in the game piece for a franchisee is is a lot different and you just get a different feel. And what are some of the reasons or benefits for why somebody that's looking to get into staffing, why why should they choose Express? So you get that local feel, right? You get a local ownership, but then you have, like I mentioned earlier, a four billion dollar company behind you. Yeah. Right. So you get this big brand in Express that you can go out and put yourself out in front of and they're going to be behind you supporting you. You know, you're not going it alone, right? Like you're not out there trying to figure out you know, how am I going to get into this vertical? What am I going to do in this vertical? Is this even a vertical I should get into? What's a VMS? What's an MSP? You know, all those things are, you're going to have subject matter experts at HQ that's going to be able to help you and kind of hold your hands, not the right way to say this because we're all adults, but you know, kind of walk the path with you so that you can understand everything about staffing and learn and grow and continue to get better in supplying workers. Having started a few businesses over the years, having some templates for what you're working on would be really nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think just rinse and repeat. Right? Yeah. yeah. From the franchise franchise model perspective, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in the industry today? So I think from the franchise side, we're seeing the same thing that we're seeing with everybody else. I think a little bit of a down year, not for everybody, but a little bit of a down year. You know, that's that's kind of the unique thing about the franchise model is there may be offices that are in certain locations that are really suffering. And then there's the flip side. You're, we're celebrating a lot of offices as well, because that's the beauty of being able to own your own business is, you know, you can take a different approach and maybe there's a, a different vertical you want to work in as a, as a franchisee. And, and that gives you more access and to a growth market. And all of a sudden often you're off and running, but I think everybody talks about the AI piece, right? Yeah. And what that looks like. I think you feel that. And, and I think you say it, and I've heard it said a few other times, like if you're not open to working with AI, it's not going to replace you, but somebody that is willing to work yeah. with is going to replace you. I think the bigger trend in, and just not necessarily in the franchisee model, but just in staffing in, in general, it's, it's probably that platform staffing. You know, we yeah. just, we were at connect together and, and you saw what Rich had to say there, but I think as we continue to go forward, that kind of blended model of brick and mortar along with gig and removing some of the barriers for, for candidates and clients to connect, 
right? And be able to move forward quicker. It's a race, right? We're all trying to find talent as fast as we can, but we're also trying to find the job orders. So once you find a job order, how quickly can you get the talent there to make sure that job order is yours and it's secured? I think the platform staffing model will give us that that opportunity in staffing. There's probably somewhere in between, right? It's not going to be traditional. It's not going to be all platform. You know, I think the the term out there is omni-channel. So I think that's probably where we'll land here as at Express. And because we we have all those local owners, but if we could we put them on the platform that we it's in the news. So you know, recently partnering with Aviante to move forward and work as work with them on on our ATS. You know, I think you'll you'll see our franchisees have a better platform to move forward on and and try to kind of blend that traditional staffing brick and mortar with that platform piece from Aviante and land somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think, I mean, you touched on one of the, the key elements. We talked we talk about this on the show a reasonable amount, but the uh, omni-channel approach and recognizing different people want to be communicated to differently, different people want to engage with your agency differently. There's going to be people that want to come in. There's going to be people that want to call. There's going to be people that want to use the app. And ultimately, you either need to be really, really good at one and say, this is all we're doing, or you need to figure out how you serve the entire market and, and offer omni-channel experiences that matter and that allow you to communicate how people want to communicate. So I think you guys are moved on a good path there, which is exciting to exciting to hear. What are some of the, and you guys, since you have a hands-on experience again, what are, what are some of the day-to-day challenges that you hear from running a franchise? What, is, what does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes some irony, right? Here comes a ton of irony. So one of the things that, that we always have struggled with is staffing it, it, <laughs> yeah. as a franchisee, right? Like, oh, we are a staffing agency, but how do you how do you keep and retain staff within your own market, right? Like, yeah, you're an expert on what your clients need, but what do you need and what skill sets are you looking for? So I think that's always been one of the struggles that that we hear from our franchisees is, you know, we're trying to retain salespeople. We're trying to retain employment specialists and, and keep them keep them engaged. And what are the tools that we can give them as a franchise or as at HQ? And to keep those type of people engaged and, and make it easier for our franchisees to retain them. That's one of the biggest challenges outside of the ever evolving staffing market, right? Like, yeah. you know, we've gone from being order takers to now all of a sudden we got to go back out and get to work and knock on doors and, and pull door handles and try to find orders everywhere while we're still racing to find talent. So we kind of get the, it's a tough little, little mix right now. And the more franchisees I talk to, and when you get into some of those franchisees that have been around a long time, that saw 2007 and 2008, yeah, this is a weird time. They're not yeah. quite sure what to do with this because the indicators are there that we should start to maybe see a little bit of an upturn, but we're still just kind of waiting for it. And we were talking before about the the staffing indicator, and you, you see it going up a little bit, yeah, but it's still not. It's not like a robust, holy cow, this is awesome kind of thing. It's just a uh, we're all just kind of waiting for like, what's next, right? And with it being an election year, you know, that might just be the way we roll, right? Because everybody's kind of just holding, you know, status quo is good. And we'll see what happens at the end of the year and and go from there. But it's, you know, the same challenges that you see in every other, in every other agency out there, every other organization in the staffing industry, we're struggling to find sales, struggling to find talent. And then also internally, this retaining talent. Yeah, it's. I think from a market perspective, I mean, we're hearing that everybody's kind of like, well, let's get through the election, let's get some interest rates, uh, maybe see a little decrease there. Yeah. But it is watching the staffing indicator to see that. Just every every time you see a little a little bump, you get excited, like maybe maybe yeah, it's right. coming back. That's been it's been a long time in this kind of a uncertain market for sure. What are some of the when it comes to the franchise owners, people that are just absolutely killing it, doing it well, success stories. Anything that you can share with the audience on best practices for like, here's how you do this well and when, where you are seeing wins in the market? Yeah, for me, it's always, and with the Express franchisees, what's, what's really great is you get so many different personalities and it, there's not one single path right to success. Yeah, It can be depending on the geographic, you know, where they are, mm-hmm. you know, if it's Tennessee or Southern California, wherever it may be. But I think one commonality that you do see is as long as you have an engaged owner that's there every day engage with their staff and is working hard both on and in the business a little bit, you see success stories there, right? Those owners who may buy it as kind of a, we already have a team here. We're just yeah. going to, I'm just going to like a yeah. lifestyle type of thing, you know, maybe not the best fit because staffing is, is hard. You know, this isn't easy. So it's, it's a, those owners that are engaged and they're doing the work every day, those are the ones that are creating successes and that are growing because they're able to feel the market, right? They're in the market every day. They know what's going on. They can make 
pivots when they need to, and they can deliver solutions that their clients are looking for because they feel it, right? And that's, if you're not there every day, you're not gonna be able to feel that. And you're gonna be kind of working on maybe old information or, you know, maybe you find out too late. That's always fun when you're, when you, when you show up your one day a week or whatever it may be, and you're like, oh man, that happened? Yeah, I, didn't, I had no idea we had that problem. We have, we have right. right. How am I going to, how do we fix, oh, it's over? Okay, good. <laughs> but I think if you looked at like the common thread and, yeah. and the, the successful franchisees, they're, they're super engaged. That's probably the most important key. Awesome. Shifting gears a little bit. One of the areas that I think you have a, a somewhat of a unique perspective on from what a lot of agencies I talk to about is the VMS. We always hear people say, oh, yeah, VMS, we know it's been adopted. I mean, in, in healthcare and other verticals very heavily, and I think light industrial may be accelerating. What's your take on VMS and how do you view it differently than, than other agencies might? So we view it differently in, in that we actually have somebody hired, me, that <laughs> that is the conduit between our, our franchisees and their clients and, yeah. and our partner. We have a strategic partner in Simple VMS. We've worked with them for 10 years unofficially, five now officially. And so my job is to kind of help those franchisees identify and then educate them on how a VMS tool can can help them secure accounts, secure and dif- differentiate them from from prospects as well or from from other vendors when they're trying to talk to prospects. And and Simple's a great partner to have because they're willing to kind of do almost anything for us and really work with us on solutions for for those clients that are looking yeah. for a VMS tool, right? We want to be, we don't want to be on the bleeding edge of it, right? Like I think we've actually probably passed that in the VMS space, right? That was probably 15, 20 years ago when we were really on that bleeding edge of trying to introduce yeah. this tool to clients and staffing. But now we're, you know, we're on the leading edge still to where we're vendors introducing a solution as opposed to, you know, somebody in, in headquarters calling another competitor v, VMS tool that, that is out there and saying, hey, we're looking for something, a solution that can help us get the visibility we need into our contingent labor spend. Well, we're, we're doing that from, from a vendor side, which is saying it's a little different, right? Like we identify that it's hard to work with multiple vendors, right? It's a difficult task to try to reconcile four different time clocks if you have yep. four different time clocks. It's, it's, a, it's difficult to how many emails back do you get when you send an email to place an order, right? Especially yeah. if you send it to four different vendors, right? Because yeah. we're all just we're all just hitting that keyboard as quick as we can and trying to send send names over so we can lock those spots down. Those are efficiencies that we can create within or with it for the client with the VMS tool that that we see here at Express is a value add. You know, for me, it's getting these franchisees to understand that this is how we protect business and we can differentiate and and they're doing a wonderful job of of taking that mindset and kind of w- walking away from the dirty word piece that yeah. we've we've heard VMS called for so long. But we know that you know, $179 billion ran through VMS tools in, in 2022. That's a lot of money. I don't yeah. know if you knew that, but I would be happy with $179 billion. Which <laughs> is me, what, what, but you know uh, what I mean? So yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's great that you guys are doing that. How, how is it affecting? I mean, the, one of the challenges I've heard from it is, the ability to have the relationship with the client or the supplier. And I'm just, it sounds like you guys are using it in a way that's actually like, hey, we're, we're bringing this to you as a, we're creating value by helping you manage something we already know is difficult. Do you have conversations around that about what it does to the relationship side? Yeah. And that's obviously with the franchise model, that's obviously the concern because they work very hard to establish the relationships that they have in the market, right? They may be friends with neighbors, coach yeah. kids, you know, all those things. So yeah, they don't, we don't want to take away that relationship. That's one of the key things that we share with our franchisees is when we partner with Simple and bring them in, we don't really take that relationship. We kind of separate it, right? It's you're the staffing expert, Mr. and Mrs. Franchisee, and then Simple VMS is our, is our technology expert. So yep. you, know, you keep that relationship, you do what you need to do there, but let's utilize this tool to give them the visibility and efficiencies that they need to better do their job. Right. And then the efficiencies come along for the office as well. Right. With Aviante and Simple being integrated together right yeah. now, we're, we're going to benefit from that as we as we continue to walk forward with Aviante as well. Awesome. No, that's great. And I know we, we've already started dipping into this a little bit when it comes to the tech stack as a whole. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys obviously are, are making some big changes. Uh, you, some of you've adopted Simple VMS and are moving down the platform play. What are some of the reasons for the changes you're making? And I would also love to know kind of what, what you're excited about in the market from a tech perspective too. 
Yeah. So I think what we've seen is that this is where the market's going, right? Like you need to have a piece of technology that one, your staff is willing to work within, right? And and we're also, let's be honest, we're a franchise order. So we need to make sure that what we deliver to our franchisees is top of class, right? We need to be able to deliver technology that that can help them be successful. And so that's why you're starting to see this shift at Express as we've had a proprietary system for 40 years and it has done in a tremendous job of getting our franchisees to where they are. But we use the cell phone analogy, right? Yeah. Like I don't think we, you know, you're not using a flip phone maybe, but I don't think you are, but you know, so you have to continue to evolve. Right. And I think that's what, that's what you're seeing here as we move away from, from our proprietary piece and ATS and front office and, and into Aviante and, and just, continuing to develop and kind of just evolve with the technology so that we can continue to deliver the end result yeah. of a great experience for both talent and client. Yeah, I think one of the things with when I hear about proprietary ATS, and I, mean, I think that's, we moved, it used to be a more common thing and that's moved largely yeah. away from that. And one of the reasons I think when I look at the leading ATS platforms, the marketplace, I, I'm having a marketplace partner software, I'm probably maybe a little bit partial, but I look yeah. at it the same way, let's go back to the phone. And on my phone, the iPhone without apps would be cool, but okay. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's the whole thing, right? I think you're absolutely right. It's like like when you can just plug all these things into the device, easily, you have the ability to do a lot more and scale a lot more. So I think that the the marketplace component of that and the ability to keep up with that on a proprietary level would be, I mean, you'd have to have an insane dev dev team. You have to make the decision, are you a technology company or not, right? And I think that's really where it goes is is if you're going to try to build out your own proprietary system, you're, you're truly in this day and age, you're, you're becoming a technology company at that point. And is that, is that the play you want to make in the staffing industry? Yeah. I I mean, that's, I don't, I don't think that's where we're going, but I mean, you're more than welcome to competitors try that, but I think, (laughs) you know, there's plenty of other tools out there that can get you to where you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. And and so where do you see the kind of the future? I know we talked about the platform side and and we could dig deeper into that, but like, are there any major kind of tech trends that you see in terms of the next three to five years where you see things going? I mean, trying to stay away from AI because it's yeah. like the popular way to go. You know, I think obviously yeah, that's that, that, at some point. <laughs> yeah, right. That's obviously the biggest trend. I think I'm that we that into, put it into chat GBT, right? Right. Now. You're like, how, when is he going to talk about AI? And yeah. then he's, you know, the AI is trying to spit that back out. I think we're going to see it. You know, you'll continue to see it, whether whether it's just automation and creating efficiencies within within the onboarding process. That's an obvious play, right? There's so many things that we do in the staffing industry that's just monotonous, right? Like things that we almost have to do every single day that can be automated, that can be put away somewhere else and let that just get that done. We'll come in here and do money-making activities, right? That as, yep. a, in a, as a franchise, that's what you want from your staff. You want them focused on money-making activities, not not just being yeah. busy, right? And I think that AI obviously will help that. You know, as I hinted on it, or we talked a lot about it before, but that, plat- that platform play where it's going to be a straight line for for talent to get to clients and they're going to be able to get there quicker. We're just here, right? That's kind of, I feel like where we're going is yep. the staffing agencies just here to, we'll vet them and make sure they got everything they need. We'll put them in the pool. Mr. Client, you go put that order out and, and get who you need. And we're just here in case you need us. I think that's really where where we're going. And, and I'm excited about that. I think that's that's such a great opportunity to really deliver. And people can be more flexible. Like maybe I want to do this today. I want to do that. And it's not as burdensome on the talent, right? Like now you got to, you got to register with six different, six different staffing vendors. You got to figure yeah. out like, where am I going to go this day? Yeah. Right. If you have it all on an app to your point, you know, you got six apps and you're just flipping through and you get to kind of figure out what you want to do. And it gives you the flexibility to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And, you know, I think that's kind of who we all are now, right? We're all just yeah. on demand and the channel that we want. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. What we want when we want it. <laughs> yeah. No, really? Yeah. I have three kids. It's what we want when we want it. It's not what I want anymore. It's what those three want. <laughs> One last question kind of just on, I, mean, I feel like you are a student of the staffing industry. I think you're reading a lot, listening to what's going on in the market more than a lot of people I talk with. And one of the things that I also feel like you have a, a good kind of a aptitude for is the leadership level. What are some of the skills from a leadership perspective that you think are going to be few, really critical for success and for the future of staffing? 
Well, thanks for that. I mean, I didn't know we were going to go this route with leadership, so I appreciate that. It's kind of like a weird way to get complimented, but I'll take it. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You know, the leadership side of that, for me, first and foremost, is always about enabling your team, right? It's not on you to do and take advantage of the things that they need to do. You need to present them with the ideas, be there, support them, and help them along the way. But I'm not doing it for you. I've read a, a book called Help Them Grow or Watch Them Go actually met the author, got it autographed by her. So you want to to talk about, I think you were indirectly calling me kind of a nerd earlier about how I study. (laughs) I'm the same. I'm like, I've got 500 audible books. So like that's like, yeah, perfect. Good. (laughs) Well, when you run 3000 miles a month, (laughs) but I think for me, it's how do you help your team grow? How do you enable them and how do you give them the tools that they need to grow and, and turn into better teammates, better people? Right. And I think that's that's really what we see in this industry because it's a people industry. Right. And I think if you look at the great leaders in this organization, especially here at Express with Bill and Bob, like I said earlier, their culture still runs through the veins of this company. They were there to help you get better. Right. And I think I don't know where I heard it, but I heard somebody say better, not best. Right. And that's what you want to do. Right. You, you just want to keep enabling your staff to get better every single day. They don't have to be the best. It's not always about being the best. I talk about that with my fifth grade soccer team. Right. Like We just need to we need to get better every day because if we're not doing that, then are we wasting a day? Right. And I don't I don't think that's anybody needs to do that. I think there's just an opportunity to get a little bit better every single day. And as a leader, I think modeling that and giving the opportunity to your team and the people around you to get better every day is the best way to take everybody forward. I love that. And with that, we're going to jump into the speed round. (laughs) And so first question I've got for you, which is one that you've heard before, but what book or books have you given most as a gift or have been most influential in your life? Yeah. So I cheated because I've listened to this before. So I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah. So the book that in this was kind of, I gave it to my team, but when I took the role as director of strategic solutions here at Express, VMS was something that I had never really done, right? I was in that camp of VMS stinks. I don't want to deal with that. We'll sell around it. We don't want to work within it. So it was kind of a new challenge for me. So I went and got a book called The Phoenix Project, and it does a tremendous job of really diving into technology and what those teams have to go through to actually make a change in a software and then deliver that software. So it gave me a much better idea on to understand exactly what dev teams do and how they have to do it and how hard that is when you're getting help desk tickets poured in your lap every day and you're getting this distraction. Oh, I need this right away. Oh, this broke. You know, and so it just gave me a better, I guess, respect for that because for a long time, you know, you just you just expect everything to work, right? Like, and it should, like when something doesn't work now, you're like, why isn't, what, what's happening? Why does it not work? For me, it gave me a really good kind of insight into what those teams go through as they try to create a tool that delivers the deliverable every day in an environment that may be unstable because it depends on the web and, you know, what internet provider you're using and all of that. So it just gave me a totally different respect. So again, the Phoenix Project, just a, a great read, kind of a nerd. Again, thank you for, I think we're going to have a common theme here now. But yeah, it was, a, it was great. Awesome. What's a failure or apparent setback that you now recognize as a crucial stepping stone to your success? Yeah. So we'll go, we'll go heavy here just for a little bit. Cause you know, I think we talked about it when we were connected and um, kind of make a joke about the, you know, why I don't drink, but yeah. I won't make that joke here. Uh, <laughs> but about 10 years ago, I gave it up. I, you know, I gave up alcohol 10 years ago. Pretty, I mean, I still hammer caffeine, but that's me. I'm going to keep that one. It was a, a decision that I needed for, for me, for my family. It was my kids. One of the proudest things that I could say is that two of my kids will have never seen me not sober. I mean, as long as I continue to walk the path, right? right? So for me, it looked like a failure at the time, right? Like, you know, you're giving up, you're finally admitting that you are powerless over this, over this substance, and there's nothing you can do about it. And so it feels like a failure, right? It feels like you're quitting, but it's the first step to making everything in your life more meaningful, because now your focus is totally different. It's, it's not on you. It's on everybody around you and how you can, how you can, be there for them. It was so it was a huge decision. And I think there's people who have met me after I made that decision that, you know, have never seen me that way. I'm super proud of that. And I can remember calling some of my friends and and just letting them know, hey, I don't 
you know, I'm not going to go do this because I don't drink anymore. And their, their, their response is like, well, I'm glad that you stopped doing that. You know, things like that yeah. because, <laughs> because I, you know, you're like, that's exactly, thank you for the instant verification that I should have. Why didn't you say something sooner? But, you know, for me, it's, I don't yeah. know if it saved my marriage, but it made everything better, eat plain and simple. And, and to meet people that are sober and staffing is kind of a unicorn. <laughs> because it can it can get pretty intense and pretty pretty difficult, but yeah, for me that was the that was a huge sure. decision. Yeah, I love that and love that sharing sharing of that. What's a seemingly small habit or routine that has had an outsized positive impact on your life or career? So you know, I think for me, when when you ask this question, the the one thing that comes to mind is I made a decision that I'm going to be all in for the other people around me right? This, yeah, I want to be successful, but we're going to get there together. Right. And that it doesn't, you know, that's kind of a big thing, but you kind of have to commit to that every day. Right. And it's a little commitment. It's just get out of your own stuff for a day. And it there's kind of, it probably runs kind of along with the, the sober decision as yeah. well, but I'm going to be here for others and I'm going to help them get better because that's, what's going to make me better at the end of the day. Yeah. So just being around it, it being available, Right. And focusing, you you hear people say live in the moment. Yeah, that's great. But we we kind of root cause our problem to use a workers' compensation form, like like, format. Like we go, we go root cause it, we root cause it. We we say, all right, that's it. Now we're going to move forward. Right. And we're, we're going to walk forward. So how do we get better with those? And, and how do I help people get better with those problems every day? And so it's just a little commitment to get out of myself every day and get into, get into everything else going on because that's way better. Right. And you just don't, you don't know, like that little, like, I'm going to listen to you for four minutes could change somebody's life because it's important to them, even though it's not important to you. Right. And I think that's, that's one of the, one of the things that, that I hear every once in a while is, you know, you hear people say it's not important to me, but it was important to them. So I was there. Yeah. Right. And that's what I think that that's just an easy little thing to do. Just be there. So I think when I made that decision, it probably does coincide directly with with the sober I, up. But, that's a great, yeah. great habit. It seems like it's suiting you well. So it seems like a good thing we should all take note of. Do you have any closing comments for the, the audience? Well, I think, thank you. First of all, this is great. It was great spending some time with you and kind of talking through this. But I think I just want everybody to, to understand this is all, this is hard, right? Staffing's hard. So, you know, we're all, we're all here trying to get better every single day. We're just, just take a little bit of a time for yourself. Understand that, you know, we're not, we're not, at the, you know, it is hard. But we're not doctors. We're not saving lives. We're influencing lives and we're trying to make lives better. But at the end of the day, as long as you know you did the best you could that day, whether it was for for talent or for a client, then be happy in that, right? Like that's all you can do. So I think for me, that's that's the message I, I like to leave behind. And of course, you know, I'll do a shameless plug. If you are interested in franchising in the staffing world, Express is your number one choice. Um, <laughs> also, engage VMS. Stop saying it's the dirty word. Those are the two things. So those are the three things I'll leave you with. Awesome. Super fun having you on the show, Will. I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope you have a great day. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Staffing Show. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at staffinghub.com to never miss an episode. Until next time.